Chesterton says in Orthodoxy that if uh, Jones worships the God within, this means ultimately that Jones shall worship Jones. And you're going to see uh, this develop here. I mean, I was raised Catholic, but kind of just kind of culturally. And but there is something about there's a, a quietness there that, you know, there's something meditative about it. And maybe because it's so boring, <laughs> but yeah. it was it's there is something about like, oh, and I'm just standing there with my kids. I'm just sitting there with my kids. It's it's like the world slows down. Like I, you know, you see why people go and why they have a connection to it. So if, as, as you follow this conversation closely, you're going to see that this is sort of a scratch and sniff transcendence where they want to feel like they're touching, getting in touch with a higher power, but a higher power or a higher being or something out there that is very, very ambiguous and very nebulous and it translates basically to the God within. Uh, they're they're just uh, centering themselves, and they're doing it in such a way as to enable them to feel humble, feel like they're in the presence of an outside force. But this is an outside force with no opinions, no definition, no law, no Mount Sinai, no Sermon on the Mount, nothing definitive. Um, Chesterton says in Orthodoxy that if uh, Jones worships the God within, this means ultimately that Jones shall worship Jones. And you're going to see uh, this develop here. Yeah, I love, I mean, I love faith. You know, I have, a, I feel like I have a good faith. You know, I like being able to close my eyes and, and I like to pray twice a day. I like to be able to think about God and, and, and talk and, or my God and ask him, you know, what I can do for others and just things like that or, when he says, my God, he says, worship God, oh, uh, my God, God as I conceive him, her, it to be, whatever this is within me. Uh, this is not the God who reveals himself. This is something else. If I need help to offer me some suggestion, um, I love that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. one of the best times I've ever had in my life or best I'd ever felt was when I felt like I had a really strong connection to a higher power. Yeah, and I'd worked on it a lot, and it and it really came to fruition. And even if some people say, "Well, that's voodoo," whatever it is, doesn't matter. It worked. It like see, it doesn't matter. It, the definitions don't matter. What hap What matters is what's going on within. What's what matters to him is the subjective experience. It like I, it worked as much as as. It it was real as far as I knew, and if that's if that's the truth to me, then that's great. Well, it's also you talk of if that's the truth to me, but this is not how Christians talk. Christians speak of that's the truth. The truth is what would have been the case had I never been born. The truth doesn't care about my feelings. The, my feelings are only uh, appropriate when they are responding to and conforming to a truth that is out there. About, uh, you you had mentioned before ego right like that humility or just a concept of humility is so necessary right to navigate this because if you let the ego take over mm. it's trouble you uh, know what i mean and i know that yeah i I'll... know that so, to some people listening that we just sound like we're saying gobbledygook but like it is one of those, like when you, you know, you're somebody that if, if you, you know, like I've struggled with my ego and stuff like that. It's like it's the only way you can get that in line is having some humility and like, and the premise of religion that or belief system that there is a higher power is is very kind of, it's like that structurally, you know, literally puts you in a position of of humbleness. Right. Now that's true if the higher power is actually a higher power as opposed to the higher power within. If it's a higher power within, then when you're prostrating yourself to deal with your ego problem, you're prostrating yourself in front of a picture of yourself. 
um, if the higher power really is a higher power, as in the God of the Bible, then he might interrupt. He might come in and tell you things you didn't want to hear. You know what I mean? Because you're you're working with alongside somebody else or for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so grateful that there's something else out there that I can believe. Because... Yeah, I think I like rejected the world so much that I was in growing up that I wasn't going to take direction from anybody in it, probably. You know, I hated my environment so much. I despised, like, I mean, I despised my environment, you know? It just, I mean, it. everything about it hurt me. I felt like, right? Yeah. That's how I felt anyway. Yeah. And, and see, that's, he's revealing the God of the system right, right there. And so the, no one in the world of human probably would I ever really believe in, right? So you almost need this other, this, this uh, satellite to beam through this other entity to help me get adjusted to trust the yeah. world again. And so that's why I'm, man, because for me, I, and everybody can have their own thoughts, I don't... For me, everybody can have their own thoughts. I want you to notice how down here it all is. But for me, as I'm just... As long as they're the same as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. But for right? me, man, I'm so... Because I wouldn't have believed you to said, hey, listen to this guy. I don't know if I would have done that. But you give me a, 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 a hype of an invisible being, right? Yeah. Visually invisible, you know? And it's just, and there's just enough malleability in there for me to say, okay, I'm willing. Notice that just enough malleability. I can shape this how I want. I can, uh, I can have a God who doesn't tell me awkward things. I'm willing to try this, and then it opens up more of a door for me of like, um, of connection. Does that make any sense? Yes, I think okay. also like, even saying. I, I I think you know the whole agnostic. I don't know is that's that's yeah, just least, where you got to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like I don't you know. I think that human beings are so arrogant, and the assumption that like every generation has thought that they've had it figured out, and every generation has been wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so he says this agnostic position of I don't know is where we have to be, and he's equating that with humility. But there are three kinds of agnosticism, three kinds. There's the agnostic who says, I don't know and I don't care. Uh, that's be the frat boy, I'm going to a party Saturday night. I don't care, I don't know. Uh, and that person doesn't want to know. So you don't need to debate with the agnostic who says, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, Then there's the dogmatic agnostic who says, I don't know, you don't know, nobody can know. And that appears to be close to what Gaffigan is saying here. I don't know, you don't know, nobody can know. Um, But uh, what you're assuming there in this dogmatic agnosticism, you're saying God is such that he cannot be known. Well, then the question is, how did you come to know that? (laughs) How, How did you learn about this mysterious attribute of God. I don't know, you don't know, nobody can know. Uh, You have just told me that God, whatever his powers, God, whatever his attributes, whatever his character, is incapable of revealing revealing himself to us. But that's a truth claim you're making about God. So dogmatic agnosticism is simply uh, a disguised way of pronouncing on something that you you want you don't want intrusions from an inconvenient god the third kind of agnosticism is the one that the bible commands i don't know and i wish i did know can someone tell me uh and then jesus promises that kind of agnostic seek and you'll find knock and the door will be opened ask and it will be given to you 